Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Pigments. This is video 10, and today we're talking about granular synthesis. So let's load up a new preset here, and let's go from the engine one to sample. So as we've talked before, a sampler, we press a note and we hear a note, and it plays that sample for us. Now the difference with granular synthesis is imagine we have many more playheads playing at the same time, maybe backwards, maybe forwards, maybe they, some of them live longer, some of them don't, there's different pitch variations and so on and so forth. That's the concept of granular synthesis in a nutshell. So as we hear this tone and then we press granular, listen to the difference. Now we see all these playheads here on the left hand side. Over here, all these knobs are generally more so for randomness. So let's turn all these down and let's kind of hone in and see exactly what's happening here. So on the density, let's drag this all the way down to one and we can always hold right click for a more precise tuning here. So we have 1.000. Now, when we hit a note, hold it down, I mean, we hear this consistent one, one sound for every second. Now we can increase this density so we have more of these notes being triggered in a quicker, or more notes in the same amount of time. So that's going to be the density, and that's measured in hertz, or we can go to sync. You can sync this to your BPM. So I have a little kick drum here. So you can almost trigger this, this sample synced with your BPM with your song. You can go, this one's one over eight by default. You can go one over 16 and so on and so forth. You can experiment with the different values there. We also have sync triplets and then we also have sync dotted. So moving back to Hertz here, on the right hand side of this, you're gonna see size time. So right now this default is 200 milliseconds. That's how long this grain has to live. Let's bring this down back to one here. So 200 milliseconds is quite, quite a quick and merciful death. However, we can always make it quicker. So now it's going to live for 63.3 milliseconds. Now this time also has quite a few different options. We have the sync as we did before, and then we have sync triplets and then the sync dotted, but we also have a ratio. So this ratio is going to be a division of this density value. So as we increase this, And the exact, uh, the exact definition for this, it says, sets the duration of the grains as a division of the current density. So moving on, let's bring this back to time and double click this for 200 milliseconds. Let's bring this one back down to one and let's look over the randomness. So for the size or for the time, right now this size, if we click this here, is gonna be both larger and smaller. So for example, to make it a little bit easier to listen to, if we had this all the way down and we selected longer, it's still down. So listen, this is what we're going to be starting with. This original one second pulse thing. So now if this is going to be longer, this is going to introduce random length of time. So if it's on longer, the notes will never be shorter than what we initially set here. And the opposite is also true. If you select this and go shorter, then whatever uh, whatever time we have selected here, these grains are going to be either that or it's going to be shorter than 200 milliseconds. Like that one right here, the second one was significantly shorter. And then the last option here is both, so they can be longer or they can be shorter. Yeah, so this one here was very, very short, and then the one before was quite long. So let's turn this random size down, and next we have random volume. It's pretty obvious. All the way to the top, it's going to be random volume. For each different grain, that is. Moving on here, we have the width control, and the easier one first to start with is going to be this pan. So select this drop down and select pan, and bring this all the way up, and it's going to do the same thing with the volume, but it's going to affect the panning. Now, if we select width, this one's a little bit special here because this adds a random offset between left and right for the random size, the random, pi random pitch, and random start, making the sound wider. And by default, this one is going to be at 50%. So if you open up this granular and you want to kind of zero with the randomness out and start fresh, generally turn this one down. 
Next up, we have limit. So this is going to be the limit of the grains that can be played at the same time. So if you drag this all the way up at the top, it's going to be 256. All the way at the bottom is going to be three. We double click it to go 128 for default. Keep in mind, granular synthesis can be very CPU heavy. So if you find yourself in a in a spot where you're making something kind of cool with granular synthesis, but your CPU is spiking, maybe you want to look at this section here and drop down the limit a little bit more because it can get out of hand really quick. So that pretty much does it for the randomness for the size. Now, if you go to the density, this is where it kind of also gets interesting. So this first random here is going to be the density up or down. So more dense or less dense. And it's pretty self-explanatory. So we have this similar pattern that we've been using, this pulse here. Now, if we bring this up, it's going to be denser. So this is going to add more density to this. It's quite an exaggeration. So let's bring this down a little bit. Now, if we do the opposite, if we said less dense, sometimes it just won't even play. And I'm holding down the note the entire time. Ah, oh, see, there we go. So it is quite less dense on that sense. And generally on default, it is more dense because it's kind of nicer to have a little bit more sometimes. Next up here, we have the direction. So, so far we've been playing this forwards in time. However, we can play this backwards. Or really a combination between the two. Some of them play forwards, some of them backwards, and so on and so forth. And this is really just one, one grain per second. Once we add a lot more of these grains, it can get really out of control and pretty crazy and really cool at the same time. Now, this is going to be the pitch variation. So we have three options. We have higher, lower, and both. So if we go for this first one here, this is higher, and we bring this all the way to the top, whatever note we press, it's going to be a randomization, but it's only going to be a higher pitch than the note we press. It'll never go below the note that we press. Now, if we select the other one lower, it's going to do the exact opposite. So it's going to play the notes lower pitch, never higher pitch than the note we press. And then selecting this menu here, we can go to both. They're pretty self-explanatory, I hope. So let's drag this knob down all the way and let's look at the start. So we have a couple of different options. We have both before and after. And this start is basically going to be kind of determined by this starting position here. So for example, let's bring this kind of maybe over here so we can kind of see a little bit. We have some space on the left here and we have some, some space on the right. So now it's there's no modulation or no randomness. So we play, play a note. We hear a little bit there. So let's bring this up just a bit here. Now, if you bring this up here and let's select before, it's only going to have a random start before this marker right here. It'll never fall on the right hand side here. Alternatively, we can always go to after, which will never fall on the left hand side. And then the last one here, we have both. So it's kind of just picking a random spot anywhere. And in that sense, this knob here is kind or this start position is kind of irrelevant if this is at full. Because it's never really going to be consistent with the start, so it kind of doesn't really matter at that point. So let's bring this knob down here. And one of the last things that we need to talk about is this whole section here in the center. So think of this more so as your envelope. So we have a lot of different shapes here, and this knob here kind of moves these back and forth. So normally we've been doing the triangle, fades up, fades down, it's in, it's out, and that's it but we can turn this to the left. So it kind of has more of like a impact and then it fades away pretty quickly. But down in this list, we have quite a few different options here. We have trapezoid, we have two key, and it's not Turkey. I thought that before, but it is not Turkey. Gaussian sync, expo deck, rixo deck, some weird words here, and then smooth exp, smooth expression probably. So this here is pr pretty much, a, let's bring this to start here. It's got a quick fade in, then it really quickly fades out. And as we increase these densities here, we can almost hear this shape here. And keep in mind, this is always modulatable, modulatable, automatable with this little plus here. So you can have something moving this sound here something even rhythmic, which is kind of a cool option there. And you're doing that with granular synthesis. So I highly recommend going through a lot of these different shapes and kind of playing with the slider here and see how it affects the sound there. Because it's actually very interesting. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with this.
And that pretty much covers the granular section. Like I said, I highly recommend you kind of go in the synth, go to the granular and kind of play with some really cool stuff because you can actually pick some interesting samples. So let's see what we can find here. A, this might be kind of interesting, select this here. So now we can select a lot of density. Let's make these last a little bit longer. So let's go some random size, put some randomness in it, ran random width at default here, random start. Some little, little pitch changes here. Some random density. It's working on a little envelope here. even more and that's really just with a couple knobs here some envelopes and kind of just quickly playing with this granular stuff they're very cool for pads if you kind of sneak them in and into something and kind of modulate a lot of these different controls and the shapes here so there's a lot of possibilities to go with so hopefully you kind of understand this granular synthesis engine here within the sample engine and yeah we'll see you in the next video where we're going to talk about this unison control because it's not just unison we have the unison we have the resonator we have bit crush and we have the modulation which is going to be this section over here so look forward to that and we'll see you in the next video